Hey, let's continue with this OS dev here. I had a couple notes that I put here, but that's all right. I think I'm ready to go. Hopefully finish out the file system creation thing today and then opens this call, but we'll see how that goes. I wrote up some more stuff to do in the future, but I'll try to get at least that down, maybe down to reading a directory. If we can go beyond that within about an hour or two, I'll try to do that going to close or some other things here. If not, if not, then that's all right. Got a timer on my phone for the power hour. Got a, a ghetto mocha <laughs> ready to go, which is just a hot chocolate packet, but using coffee instead of water or milk. And it's it's not bad. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm good to go with this. Let's see what else I got going on here. And I did for new stuff, use write not read. So when I'm setting a bit, I was doing read twice. Yeah, we need to do write, even though I'm not quite using this just yet. We need to do write, not read, because reading it is not going to update on disk. That would be bad. And then checking if the new blocks with the additional directory entry is going to be greater than the current blocks. If we had to add, if we have to add another disk block to be in use, um, I guess I wanted to make a sort of helper function for that. So it looks like I probably wrote this at night sometime in the past week and don't remember, but. <laughs> Wrote a, I want to make a helper function to check if the bits are free because I might do it in multiple places I think would be the reasoning for this So okay, I might do that and I probably need that before here or sometime before this is checked so I could do that You want 32t so we could either return a sort of a chunk of data that contains the bits we want to check I could just return that chunk and we could check it within you know our our runtime code logic here, or I could return like a true or false if the bits are zero are all cleared or not. That seems like that would be simpler. Yeah, if the bits are free, and if the bits are free, then we would just use those additional bits here, or else we wouldn't. So I might go with that. So that seems like a simpler implementation. That's like a helper function. Let's, I don't know, put it above here, just somewhere in here. These are all helper functions anyway. So let's say bits are free in disk block and do we give it a certain block, a certain number of blocks? Maybe just the block number to start out with. We'll just do that. And I guess if when I want to implement this, I'm checking if the bits are free from the inode X tent. So I'd probably need to pass the bit number as well. We'll say by default we can return false unless it's true, so the compiler says it's in use. Check if given series of bits are all zero or not set within given within a given disk block. If it goes across block boundaries, I may want to put a number of blocks, like a starting and a length, like I've done for other things. We might do that in a bit if that seems to be better. So just do a little little helper function here. So the currently use X tense for the first in length and be expanded, then we'll want to do that. Otherwise only bit 22. Right here we only have to check if one additional bit is set, which is good. So let's just say, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if not, allocate find a new one. So how do we check if they're currently set within the disk? We'd want to pass something to this function. Let's see. If so, use that bit. So let's say if we have if bits are free in disk block, we need to pass some bits and some disk block. Well, first, before we do that, we have to find where we want to add it. Let's just get rid of this. Let's... um. Let's do that. So let's find, this will be future, let's find um, last used extent in inode, and the currently used one, which is going to be the parent inode. I'll have to find that. So which be UN8, which is fine. This will be direct extent per inode. So we want to check everything within this parent inode to see the last one that's being used, which will be parent inode with 
we'll say dot extent uh, i. <laughs> Let's say we want to skip it if it's blank, I suppose. Probably want something else here actually as well. Let's say this, we'll say last used block, last used disk block. Yeah, we'll say dot first block is not equal to zero, then it is in use. And I'll set the last used block to that. That's the starting block. It'll have a length, but the start of that area on this is going to be where last used block is. So that will equal this. So we'll say start of last used area on disk for file data. Okay, and then if we get through that, this should be set, but we also do want to check the single indirect and the double indirect, even though I'm not doing that. We probably would want to go through there. But none of our files are going to be up to that point at this point, so that'll be a to-do for later, of course. So we should get the first block that's used between basically one to four or whatever, whatever extents are in there. Uh, assuming that's not zero. If it is zero, then this is a new file, I guess. But the directory shouldn't be new that we're going into the parent inode, so that shouldn't happen. So we should be all right with that. A lot of shoulds going on. Should be all right for that. So we have the last used block, I guess. We'll put that as the thing in here. We do need the bit number. We will need a bit number. If it can be expanded by one. So the first block. Yeah, subsequently data blocks on disk. Those would be the data bits. Yeah, okay. So that would be the bit number. So we have the block number where it's at. But I need to check within the data bit maps. Actually, these are the bits. This would be the bits. Um, So if we want to check the one directly beyond that, we would do plus one to see if the one right next to it is free, but we need to do length and blocks as well for the bits. So that's fun. Um, <laughs> so if it has a first block, let's do this. Let's do, um, we get the first block plus the length and blocks. All right, because that's the one that's used for the file. So if the file has, if the inode has an extent that's like the first block where the data starts on disk is 10 and the length is two, then it'd be 10 and 11, I guess. But the, the last used one that we want to check is going to be 10 plus two, which would be, yeah, where this is at. If the length is two, it would only take up 10 and 11. If we directly add those, and it would be 12, if it was 10 and two length, then we could check if that one is free. But then we just need to check I'll just say if bits, I'll say bit is free. We'll just check one bit. Let me simplify it before I try to be in a more general case for multiple things. We need a bit and we need a block to check within. What block would be checking? We need the, the data bitmaps, I guess. That would be here. We need to pass in pass in something from the super block. What do we need to pass in? We need to find where it corresponds on disk. Wonder how I check that. <laughs> if the bit is free within the data bitmap, that's what I want to check. Data bitmap blocks, okay. Well, I know I'd start at the first one to get the thing that we need to offset from. First data bitmap block. We need to offset something from that. So what would that be? 
That would be our bit that we're checking. Probably don't need to complicate it this much. Oh well. <laughs> the bit that we're checking divided by however many bits are in a block, that would get the block that we're offsetting from. Because this should be the bit that we're checking, hopefully. Maybe not. So really, I could do that within here. I probably don't need an extra function right now. Let me just get rid of that. I'll probably add it back later and regret my decision. That's okay. <laughs> so we don't need to do that. We need to check if that bit is free. So we start here, we offset by, hopefully that's a bit number. It should be. Offset by bits per block. That's the block. So 0 to 32k approximately, minus 1, right? 0 to 32k minus 1 be the number of bits in a block. So this should be the block number. It's similar to what we did last time, I think, which is set bit. Yeah, so we have a bit number. We modulo that. Yeah, because I divided by bits per block. Okay. We modulo that. We divided by it to get the initial one. We modulo to get the one within that block. Yeah, okay. I can do that. This will give a block number here. Let's say this is the block we want to check, and the bit we want to check within that block is our last used one here. So we need to modulo by bits per block to get the offset within to this that we need to check. Let's give this again a pointer to a chunk. I'm not using within this function yet, I don't think. Okay. So we need to load that, of course, to memory. Load one block of data. We have sectors per block. Yes, we do. We have block to check. We need to load it somewhere. We'll load it to our temp block. Is it temp? Yeah, temp block. We'll do read with retry. Okay, assuming that works, hopefully it does. We'll have the chunk. Do need to do that. Get a pointer to the temp block, and then we need to see. We need to see if our last use block, which we moduloed, I guess divide by 32, because this is a four byte thing. We don't need to or it, but we do need to check. It's anded with one shift left by last use block modulo 32. So we need to check if that's not the case. So not. If it's not set, then we can use that. Use that bit. So what I'm doing is checking if the one block beyond where it's currently at is free, then I can just add to the current extents lengthen blocks. Otherwise, I'll have to make a new extent. So I don't think I need to add to check if like three in a row are free, just if the next one after is free, because I'm only going to be increasing by one, I think. So that's what I'm doing. Find last used extent and parent inodes. Find the last used extents. Data blocks um, end. Let's do find the end of the last used extents data blocks. That makes more sense. In the parent inode. Right, people outside shooting guns or something, as is 
tradition where I'm at. That's fun for concentrating. So check return code for error. Not doing that. Yeah, so bit that I have divided by 32. We're checking if it's one. Shift left by the bit modulo, yes. And if that's not true, a bunch of parentheses. If that is true, if it's not set, we want to use that bit. If not, allocate and do this. Okay, so how do we use that bit where we do that? We just need to, well, we have the last used block. We have the parent inode, I guess, that we want to use here. Maybe I can get a pointer to that. We'd have to update the data within the parent inode, within the extent. We just have to update that on disk. So I could do that here, because I'm gonna update it anyway. So that should be fine. So do parent. Let's do this. Check if next block at end of x tense data is available. All right. If so, use that bit and expand inodes extent length in blocks. So we have to find what extent number it is. Let's do that. Instead of I here, we'll say last used extent. Which I don't need to set it to zero again, but I am, oh well. So extent offset by last used extent dot the lengthen blocks. We'll add one. Yeah, I can just do plus plus because we're in C. Okay, if not, I need to do this. So I need to update the data blocks here. And that data block would be where I'm at here, this block added to the first block, or the last used one here, because that's also the bit number. But we did modulo it, so that's not going to be able to be used anymore. So this is when I update the data blocks. I need to know which one to update. That'll be either what, where I set here, or where I set here, or otherwise it would be the last used one within the inode regardless. Actually, that might be better to extract out into a helper function anyway, like I said I should have done earlier when I removed it. Maybe. I don't have anything for checking bits, right, in here. I don't think I, I don't think I made one. I only made to set a function, set a bit. Yeah. So I could have something, well, no, yeah, I do. Find first free bit, I could do that. That's only a single bit, but that'll work. Find first free bit, we can do that. Am I using this in this file? I am. First free inode bit, find first free bit and data, and disk blocks for the first inode bitmap block and the number. Okay, that'll be like what I'm doing here. For the data bits, I'm just gonna put this here. that up so I'm not in the way. Okay, allocate find a new data bitmap. So we have that here for the new data block. We will set that for this free bit, probably. I don't know if that needs to be set in every case, like if we do this. 
I guess it was free, so we might need to. That would not be good, but maybe. But I'm not setting that bit. We do need to set that bit. Yeah, I do set that bit in use, okay. I'll need to do that in a bit. <laughs> in a bit. Add new x tent to the parent inodes x tent. The first block equals the new bit found, because I will have to do that. And the length equals one. So then I'd have to see if our last used one is less than this stuff. This is fun. We have that in there, that's that's fine. So if last used extent you know is less than the number of extents in the inode, which be direct extents per inode, which is four. So if it's less than four, it would only be zero, one, two, or three, so I'd have to do minus one, because zero based is fun. Then we can use the next one, is what this is saying. We can use that extent because it will be free. So I do dot extent last used extent. If the last used one is less than up to three, so it can only be zero, one, or two. And that's the last used one. We'd have to do plus one in this case because that one's used. We need the one that's not used and up until the end. So that's what I'm doing here. And the first block would be that new bit that we found here. Man, testing all this stuff is not going to be fun, because I'm sure it's all broken everywhere <laughs> with logic errors. That's all right. That'll be, yeah, the first free data bit. We're going to mark it as in use. We'll update the super block on disk. I'm doing that. Okay. And then the length in blocks for that would be one. We do need an else case here. Use single or double indirect extents. But punt that off to later. This would be length in blocks. The length in blocks will be one because it only has one block in use for this new one. So that will be okay. We'll update it on disk from this stuff here. And new extent pair nine nodes. First block is new data bit found, like the blocks is one. Um, add to extent, add to next direct extent if available. Just checking this again. This will not be I. Not what I meant. Dang it. Let's replace slash I with slash last used extent. It didn't like that. <laughs> I just wanted to do find replace, man. First block plus that, okay. Getting pretty verbose with my names. I might wanna simplify these things, but that's okay. Check if the next block is available, do that, check that. The return code, we get the chunk. I'm hoping this is right. It might not be. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. The last use, this should correspond to the bit we're checking. If it does, I keep doing shift and J, and that's not what I want to do. Shift, release shift, and then do J. That's what I want to do to highlight. 
So that does correspond one to one. A block is the bit, zero based index bit. Then, yeah, that would be the bit that we're going to check because it's one after the one we're going to use. That gets the offset with this, gets the block, this gets the offset within it on disk. And it's also the bit to check, which that's what I'm not so sure of. Put that there to make a little more sense. This needs to be modulo equals, otherwise it won't be set. That needs to be equals. I just I'm not sure if that corresponds. Like if it's if we're checking bit 22, like is that also block 22? That's the data block, which would probably be block 22 on disk, I would think. So maybe. But it's also bit 22. Is it bit 22 within the block 22? That's I don't think that's correct. I'm not sure. I don't think this is right, but I don't know. <laughs> um, let's check. Make disk. I do that stuff in here, don't I? First data block is inode plus the number of inodes. Where am I writing the root directory? Nowhere? Okay. <laughs> data blocks are after that. So what is the first? First data block is after the inode blocks. Inodes are after the data bitmap. Okay. Yeah, that should be offset within the bitmap blocks, right? If it's 22 would be zero, that'd be zero, that's fine. If it's greater than that, we'd have that number of bits. Okay, this might be right, okay. Whatever, we'll find out later when nothing works. That's that's okay. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and do whatever else I need to do, which is updating the parent inode, it looks like. Update inode blocks for parent directory inode. That would be parent inode. We can update the data as well. Let's update the data first. Yeah, we need to update the inode itself, and then we'll update that. This would be, we already updated the X tense here if we needed to. Other than that, it should just be the file size and then adding the file to the data for this directory. So the file size will be size in bytes. I can check what else I need here. Probably just the size here and the modified timestamp. Let's grab those. So we're already using that stuff. Reference count, we don't need. Padding, we don't need. Yeah. Let's grab those. So size and bytes will be, it'll be uh, the directory. It'll be another directory entry for the file. We'll do that. Size and sectors. will equal, I think we have bytes to sectors, don't we? I have bytes, yeah, bytes to sectors. Bytes to sectors of the size and bytes, which will be a parent inode, size and bytes, and the timestamp. Did I make a helper function for this? Just to return like now or the time? Probably not. Oh yeah, current timestamp, there we go. Equals current timestamp. Now it'll return FS date time area there. Which be here, that works. Update remaining data, parent inode. Meaning parent inode data, update the inode blocks and the data blocks. Yes. So the inode blocks would be reading. So we only need one sector here. And the sector would be the parent inodes ID offset from the start of the inode blocks. 
So it'd be first inode block plus this divided by the number of inodes in a block. So we should have inodes per inodes per sector. Okay, because this would be a sector that we're loading. Right, I'm only loading one. But we can do inodes per sector. Yeah, that should be all right. The inode ID corresponds to the offset within the inode blocks, within the inode sectors even. which means we need to convert this to sectors as well because we're not working in blocks. So that would be sectors per block. Let's do that. Um, we'll just do that. Yeah. I was like, how do I want to do freaking indentation that looks bad anyway it doesn't matter <laughs> uh, i'll read it to temp sector and we'll do read with retry so we read it in here we'll need an inode pointer to that which i don't have yet no i do have this here actually so let me put that there, because it'll be multiple spots. It's going to be within multiple spots. So let's have temp inode be null or zero right now. Our pointer. And we'll set that there so we can use it down here. An inode t pointer to temp sector. And I will add on the inode ID, because we need to get the right inode within that sector. Modulo inodes per sector. And that will get the inode data. It'll point to an inode t size data area <laughs> within that sector for where this inode is supposed to go. So I have that there and I can set it since I updated this, which I think I updated that to begin with, right? Yeah, I got the inode from the path, so that should have updated it. So that means I can set that data in the sector from the parent inode data now, and then I can write it back to disk. So we'll just be right with retry. The same sector, same data and temp, we'll write it. There we go. So we need to update the data blocks or the data block. It'll just be one because we're adding the new directory entry for the file that we're creating here for the file name and ID. I'll have to do a similar thing for this. Since we already have the one that we're going to update, we should just have to update the one sector that it's going to be in. Actually, that should be OK. So I will be doing this similar thing here. Read it to memory, update the memory and write the memory back. So except this will be data block. And we will add in. I guess the extents, right? So it'll be the extent offset by last used extent, depending what that is. If we're going to use plus one, then we have to use the plus one here. So if this is less than plus one, else we use these. Let's do this. Because that won't be applicable in this case. All right, so let's say last use x10 plus plus, and then We'll have that updated here. Okay. What am I doing? <laughs> here in inode extent, last used extent. We're using its first block plus the lengthen blocks, right? That would be the end of where it's going. I think so. This is this is not very fun. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Let's 
So if the last used data on the disk is, I don't know, at block like 20 and the length is two, this will be 20 plus two, and that will be the block. So we will have to multiply this also times that. This is painful. Let's do double on here. Because that gets the block that we're updating and to convert that block into a sector, we have to multiply by the sectors per block. The first data block is where we start. We have to offset to the right block that we want to use. That's the sector that we're starting for that block. The so first plus the length, is it that or is it that minus one? Because if it's, if it starts at 20 and the length is two, it would be 20 and 21. I'm not sure this would be right. This might be one off if it's zero based. I think it's zero based indexing here. Let's do this here. Let me have an extent T. Temp extent, this will be parent inode.extent last used extent. Let's do this because sometimes it helps me read it better if it's slightly shorter. It's a little easier to read. I guess I don't need those if I do that, because it's this plus this times that. No, I probably do. So these, we've got a constant. If it was 22, we probably don't want that. We probably want 21, which is where the last one is. This might be a mistake, probably is, oh well. It probably is. <laughs> if I'm loading, what data am I loading? The first and the length. That's how I'm loading it though. This many sectors starting at this sector. Oh, but that is implicit. Yeah, that will work. Uh, this, I need to get the right sector to load. Yeah, this is probably right. We have to subtract one because if it, if it started at 20 and went for two blocks, it would be 20, block 20 and 21. It would not be 22. We have to get 21 and get the sector that that's at. We might have to do blocks, actually. Let's do that. Instead of trying to narrow it down, maybe. Because I'd have to get the sector within the block, and I don't know what that is right now. So yeah, I would probably have to probably have to get the full block. Unfortunately, that's okay. But then we don't have to multiply here. We don't have to convert it sectors per block. We just take the first data block. We might have to multiply this so we know where to start though. Oh, this is annoying. Okay. <laughs> I need to get a full block of sectors starting at starting at this sector for the block. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's read it into a block. Wish my brain worked better. That's okay. I have to find the end of that portion. We can do this again after we update, except with write. So I just need to update here, which is going to be, let's say a directory entry T, temp directory entry, that will be a directory entry T, pointer to this block. How do we know how many entries? I wanna add it to the end. So I need to add to the end. Let's say add new directory entry to end of current list. So if this block contains all the directory entries, how do we know where the end is at? We can't necessarily search for one that doesn't have an ID or a blank name because we could have holes and you know the data would be a little bit fragmented, but we could have holes in there 
depending on if we delete or remove files and move them around and such. So we can't search for a zero necessarily. So we'd have to get the number that are currently there. So current directory entries would be what? But if we had that, we'd have to find the end of the current list. And since there's holes, we can't necessarily just jump and offset to that because some will take zero data and some won't. So this is annoying. <laughs> Another I, that's fine. Well, we can't even do that, really. I'll just say while I is less than the current number that we're looking for. Need to go if our temp directory entry ID is not equal to zero, then increment I. And then when it equals the current, then we're not, we'll know we're past that. Yeah, so we'll have to increment. We'll have to increment I and the temp directory entry to get to the next one. Pointer arithmetic, we'll have it move directory entry T amount of space each time. Amount of bytes. So that should be okay. What I could do is probably this. Probably make this a for loop, right? Point it to the temp block. Check this condition. And then we'll keep incrementing the directory entry. Yeah. That should work. And we'll do this. If it's greater than zero, we'll do I plus plus. And that will end when this equals here. I think the only way this would, well, one of the only ways this would cause issues is if we cross the, like a block boundary or something outside of what we've loaded. If the last directory entry is like on or after that boundary, that might be something we have to check in the future. Unfortunately, we'll know if I do tests for filling up a directory, which I should do later. That'll be like a basic test. Sometime later. So how do we know the current directory entries though? Because I need that as a prerequisite here. But if I do have that, then I can do this. Which means I can add it at that portion when it's there because temp directory entry will be pointing to that. So the data at that directory entry, we can set. So let's set that. Set the ID would be the new ID for the inode that we made, which I think is just called new inode. New inode ID. And the name, we can't just do that, so we have to string copy into there, that's fine. What would the name be? Did I get that in this function? The last name and path or whatever. Because I create a file to path, I need to get the last thing in the path. I don't remember if I did that. Yeah, I do, right here, file name, okay. We'll use later. I wanna do this before we end up setting bits, that would be good, right? Let's do that here. Might even want that first, maybe? Well, I can do that here, that's all right. So we'll have a file name. That will be the name that we do. Is that going to be null uh, delimited? I just returned the thing at the end of the path. So it should be, yeah, it should be null delimited then for the file path. Hopefully it will be, we'll find out if it's not. Be another error. That'll take forever to debug. But assuming it is, we can set that here, file name. And then we will 
That will be pointing to the data within the temp block. So that eight sector, that 4K chunk, we're updating the data within there where the inode's supposed to be, and we'll write that back. And subsequently, that directory, its data, should have the new file name added at the end. So that should be okay. And then we'd update the super blocks. The only thing we need to do here is find the current number of entries that we have. And that will be, um, since I had that running in my subconscious while I was doing this, <laughs> his brains are cool like that. That should just be the file size. Size and bytes, and we will divide or modulo? Probably divide, right? Because it would be, it would have to be um, divisible by this evenly, I would think. Because the size of a directory entry T is 64. So if we add another one, this should still be a multiple of 64. If it's a directory, the file size should always be a multiple of 64 because all the directory entries will have a size of 64. That would make sense. So this should, we should just be able to divide by the size of a directory entry to get the number. I would think, I would hope. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm doing my job completely wrong. Size of inode T should equal 64. And the directory entry here, yeah, has four bytes plus 60, which should be 64, yeah. So what I can check is in make this.c when we're making the inode blocks, maybe for the root directory. Yeah, size of directory entry times the number of files. Yeah, okay. That would be a multiple of 64 because we're using that directory entry t. And when we're writing the data, we're adding one and two, which is writing the size of directory entry. Okay, yeah, so that should be 128. So our default empty directories later should have a size of 128 because 64 bytes for the entry for dot and dot dot. And that's the only thing they have by default. Of course, right now I don't have make directory as a command working and function for that, but that's okay. I think that's all we'll need to do here. It's probably not going to work, but you know, I at least have the basic thing laid out to debug now, which took forever and a half, like five, six hours now. So that's fun. <laughs> That's fun. So what did I have left to do down here? Anything, or was this all done? I don't remember. I guess this was all done. I was just waiting to make a new file and open if it did not exist and it had the create flag set. Then it would return an inode, which we would get. Okay, yeah, okay. So it's, I mean, this isn't tested, but as far as development work, which is what this to-do list is for, I'm gonna say these are good, and I'm gonna try to work on read directory. Um, I guess, or I can call this and then do that as the next one, but I kind of want to test with that, but I've been about going for an hour, so I'm going to take a short break and uh, make another part on the end of this that hopefully is less than an hour. So, <laughs> and then I'll call it after I do read directory, but I'll be back in one second to continue with that. All right, I'm back for another, I guess, hour, set the timer, hour of pain. <laughs> As it were, I noticed some issues, I think, or some errors in the uh, implementation before I go on to read directory, make that function. So I just want to clear those up first while they're on my mind. Uh, when we're setting a bit in the disk block, read write sectors here expects a starting sector or a starting 512 byte, you know, an LBA value. It does not expect a block. So <laughs> if we give it a block number, that's not gonna be the sector on disk where that block starts. So I do have to multiply this by sectors per block. You know, if the block number was two, I don't wanna load sector two, I wanna load block two, which would be 16 is where that would start. And then the eight sectors there for the full block of data into this area. So that would be an issue. I think the rest of this is okay. This I'm gonna shorten slightly by just doing mod equals, because that's what that equals anyway. And hopefully the rest of that is okay. <laughs> Finding the first free bit, I think this is all right. And updating the super block with the current data, that should be okay. So creating a file. There might have been some things I could clear up a little bit here, I think, if I don't forget right now. 
I think it was reading where I'm updating the parent directory. Yeah. So the last used block, again, is it's going to be as it is now, it's one based indexing. I need this to be zero based indexing because if we have an extent and it starts at like block 30 and it goes until block 33, we'll say the length is four in that case, right? 30, 31, 32, and 33. But this would give 34 because it'll be this plus the length, which would be four. So we don't want that. We want to subtract one from this value if we want that to be correct. So there we go. Let's, I'll just move this over here, lengthen blocks, this plus this, minus one. Hopefully that was the only other issue there. <laughs> the last used block was not correct. And that would correspond to a bit that I think is right. We will see. So this I think I can clear up a little bit actually, make this a little bit easier and less error prone, which this might be. I'm checking the, uh, the bit to check. So I can actually load just one sector at a time. See, this wouldn't be correct either. This would need to be sectors per block. So I just have that mistake everywhere here, which is not great. <laughs> I have to remember that. I should really probably check all read write sectors within this, uh, within this function just to make sure I'm doing that. Because this is in terms of where it starts in sectors, and that is correct. So this is sectors per block. Yeah, block to check times that. That's correct, that's correct. Sectors, sectors, yeah, I think this is correct, but it's a little iffy. But I just wanted to check those first because it was wrong before, so go back, okay. So where I'm checking, in here, the data bitmap block, I can really get a sector here, actually, I believe. So let's say the sector that I want to check, so I can load a sector instead of a block at a time, less disk IO, it would be faster, I guess, marginally. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> but I should be able to do this, actually. So I need the, the bit, which is going to be Block to check. So I'm trying to I'm trying to say the last used block is a bit we need to check within the bitmap. So yeah, I could I could do that actually. So the last used block is a bit within the bitmap we want to check. Or well, if that plus one is free, I suppose. That's why I didn't do minus one, but that's fine. We can do plus one there. So that's a bit we want to check. So if we have a bit, we can convert that bit number to a byte number since there's eight bits in a byte by dividing by eight. So if the bit number is like 20, you know, the byte that it's located within would be bytes um, two, I guess. Well, zero based, maybe byte three, because <laughs> zero to seven, eight to 15, 16 to 23, it'd be within that range. So this should be, I guess, three, or well, two, zero based indexing. But that'll convert it to, from a bit to a byte, and we can convert a byte to a sector or if you will, an offset from the start of a given sector range, say for the bitmap, the bitmap contains a certain number of sectors starting at the first data bitmap block converted to a sector. If we did that, then we can get the offset within those bitmap sectors by converting this number to a sector number. So if we have the bit, we can convert bit to a byte. We can convert the byte to a sector number by dividing again by however big a sector is, which I think is FS sector size, yeah. So this would be convert bit to byte to sector is what this is doing. And we have the block to check and stuff. So what I can do is just load one sector starting at the first bitmap block. Let's change that. We do need to convert that to sectors to get the right sector to start at. And yeah, I'll just put these all in their own lines again. So we need to add to that. I think that's right. So we need to add to that the offset. So that would be data bitmap sector. That should work because this would be the sector one sector number that we're looking for. So if the bit to check was like 20, this would be three, three divided by the sector size. This is the byte to check, byte three within 
a sector zero. But if this byte number was like 4097, right, this wouldn't be zero, this would be one. And we would have to add one sector for the right one to check. So that should be okay. Um, all right, let's do, let's just do that. Okay, and then I can put that within the temp sector. So I don't need to do blocks to check. I can just put that within the temp sector. And then if we need to see which one we need to check, do need to still do that. Instead of getting the four bytes, we could get the four bytes or we could get the one byte area since we have the, the thing that we need to check here. And uh, temp sector in this case is one byte, sort of an 8-bit pointer, if you will, to a certain number of bytes. So a certain, you know, it's an array, but it's a pointer to an area of memory that has a certain number of bytes because it's a UN8. An FS sector size number of UN8s. So I'm done. I just say that because this temp sector can be used as a pointer. We can offset within it. You all know that. So... What we can do is just check that directly instead of using other values here. It might be easier to read. Since we read it to this sector, we can offset into that and check if the bit is set. So the bit we're looking for to check if it's set is last used block plus one in this case. And I can make another sort of helper variable to cut down on line noise. But if we divide by eight, it converts the bit to a byte. And we can check if the bit within that byte is free by, you know, anding with this, which would be this if condition. So I shouldn't need that. We should just be able to do if this and it with one. Let's do that actually. Yeah, last use plus one. Let's do, let's do bit to check because that should be a bit number. Is that going to be right since I subtracted one? Yeah, because we should just be checking, yeah, that plus one would be would be the one we're checking, because that'll be one base, not zero based. Okay. And we can do 32 too, that's fine. <laughs> this is a number. It's an offset, but the offset will be within one byte pointer arithmetic, so that won't be four bytes like the chunk was. That's what I was trying to think. So we'll just have this be last block plus one. And this can be bit to check. Divided by eight would be the byte. Divided by that would be the sector. One based indexing. Okay. Just to make this a little bit clearer. So if the bit to check over eight, if the byte has that bit set, which would be bit to check modulo eight. It's just one byte that we're checking here. Then we can do that. And we can use that bit. Else we'll need another bit. I think that makes it a little simpler, a little clearer, in my opinion. We're only reading one sector at a time instead of a full block as well, which should be good. So if we want to use that, then we set that as in use. Do we need to set that on the disk? Probably. We probably want to set that bit as in use, don't we? Because we're using that. If it's free, then we want to do that. So let's do that. Temp sector. Bit to check. And we'll just do, well, we'll just do the same thing. We won't do or. Or yeah, we will do or or equal with that, because we're using that bit now. It was free, we're going to use it. So we're not doing that one's there. Yeah, okay. So if we did that, then we updated it, so we need to write it back to disk. Let's write with retry. 
Okay, other otherwise we need to find the new bit. So we find the first free one. Did we already have this available before this point? Are we resetting it for no reason? Because we do, we find the first free data bit up here. That's the next one that's free. So in that case, we shouldn't have to read get this at this point. We, are, we already did that by this point. We would set it and then get the next one, I suppose. I don't know. Add new extent appearance. Uh, new, new data bit found. Yeah. This would be the first free data bit here. And then we'd have to do this again. We'd set it as in use. And then we'd get the next one. Find a new data bitmap. Just do this. Find a new data bitmap bit for the new data block at the new extent. Okay. First block is new. So I get the one to add it to. I add it here, which is the first free data bit, and then we're updating that because we set it as used. Yeah, that should be the better, the better implementation there. And we update the remaining data. Just reviewing it again because I had a few minutes. Got to refresh. <laughs> refresh my brain. Update this stuff. Update the inode blocks. That's the inode to update. It's the sector containing the inode to update. We do update that. Write it back. Update the data. We did that. No more to do. Get the last used extent. Which I did up here. Yeah, okay. I don't like how this looks. This is pretty ugly. <laughs> I like these two lines. Update the data block for the parent inode. Do I need the full block though? I probably do actually. Because the full block has all the directory entries. That one probably does need to be a block. It can't just be a sector. I think, maybe not though. But I don't want to think about that anymore, so <laughs> let's assume that's right. Yeah, first plus length minus one, that's true. That's where it ends. Sectors per block. So that's the sector. So what we could do is look through all of those and say, instead of starting there, it might be more data we read through down in this loop for all the directory entries, but it might be more correct to just start, you know, where this is at. So we can read a full block. That's starting at the end of the block. We could just read all the data for the file and put it at the next empty spot instead of putting it at the end. If we have a directory with a bunch of files and we delete some of those files, there's going to be gaps in that directory, right? Some of those files will have disappeared. Their size would be zero. They wouldn't have an ID in the inode or the directory entry that, it, that used to be there. So we could find the first empty spot and put the new file there instead of just putting it at the end of the list and, you know, picking up more data. I'm not sure. Because I guess we would update, I'll update the size later if we remove a file. So that should be okay because we're counting the current entries that are there. And I would decrement the size by the size of directory entry when we delete from the directory. So maybe that's not too big of an issue. I figure it would be better if we just did like a first fit sort of thing instead of looking towards the end. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure that would be any simpler than what I have or any better in practice. So, oh well. Just trying to think things through. And this won't be right because I'm looping through all of them. So yeah, that's not right. I'm looping through all of these instead of only the ones that would be in the last sector that was loaded to this block. Right? This would be the length in blocks. We want to load eight sectors, one block of data. Offset from here, offset to the first, plus the length minus one. Not sure that would be right. 
I mean, I don't think I have to offset from here. The first block in the extent would be the block on the disk that's going to be used. So probably we would just load that. Right? And what we could do is load this. Well, I only want one block at a time, actually. That wouldn't be good. Hmm. We could do a first fit and change this stuff to, to be a first fit. As we add the directory entry. Let's separate this out so I read it a little better. Um, use a for use the first empty directory entry available or end of list. Okay. Yeah, we'll do we'll do either or. So we have the last one that's used. We could do this in a loop. Again, we'll do i, I guess. Zero i less than the number of extents in an inode. I just think this would be better, and thinking it through might cause less errors. We have the sectors per block. We want to read the next block for this directory. I guess in the last one that's used. Do we want to read the last one that's used here? We could just read the full thing. But that's what we're going to add to if I need to, right? That's what we're doing here in the last used extent. So yeah, we can read through all the blocks in the last used extent, I guess, because we incremented the length if we needed. Or we got a new one. I don't think that's right. <laughs> uh, in all cases, find my end. That's only if we need to add a new one. Yeah, otherwise we could just add to one of the current ones, I suppose. We need to add to the last one if the file size increases. If it doesn't increase, we probably don't. I would think. I don't know. Don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Get rid of that. I'm trying to think. I mean, if because if I if I have to add a new block, I'd probably want to add it, add the name in the directory the directory's file data, where the directory entries are stored, I'd want to add to the new block that was added if I had to add a new block, right? But if I don't have to do this, I probably want to add it to whatever's first available. And if I do have to add it, I have to add it directly, you know, at the start of that new block, I guess. I don't know. But I'm not sure how to do that. <laughs> so I might just add a new block and then run through all the data in the file and add it at the first one anyway, which would mean... Uh, you know, if it added a new block, that block might not have the data that's going to be added. So that would not be good. I'm not sure how to fix that at the moment. So we go through all the extents per inode. Let's just read the blocks for that extent, I suppose. Does it need to be the temp? Maybe not. Let's just see this. Whatever. We'll just do this. We'll assume we'll we'll do this stuff later, maybe. This is going to be painful. And new block being added versus at first found location in directories file data. Directories data blocks. Maybe I'll, I'll set that there to think about later. 
Because we'll probably want to add to this block, otherwise the first one that we find. I could add like a, a boolean and then check that down here or something, or rearrange things to make more sense. <laughs> Would probably be better. Let's just say we're doing this, so I can get something done today. Oh, something done today. So direct extents per inode, so I'm going to need an inner loop as well. Actually. We'll make it 32, we'll make J. J would be whatever we're looking through right now, the extent, right? And this is in the parent inode. So the, the extent would be I. We'd need to do the first block up to the lengthen blocks. So this would be the first block number, which should be the disk block that the file is located at. So J is less than could make the extent here, because I have temp extent, right? Which is bad. I shouldn't be rewriting this because it's going to be bad later, but oh well. Let's overwrite this right now. Put that here. Temp extent. So I have the first block. Well... I could do this within this loop. So this will be the, this one here. So the first minus the length. So for each extent, we'll go through the blocks in the extent. And I want to read that block to memory, which the block would be J. So let's read J. Convert it to a sector, time sectors per block. That would be where that starts, that block of data. We'd read that block of data starting at this location into temp block. Okay. So let's get the number of entries first off. We'd have a temp directory entry, which points to that block. Uh, let's say num entries, let's do this to start off with, and that would be our i value here. So this would be directory entry, well, I guess I would leave it here because it would be outward. Let's this up here as well. So that will be equal to this block. We could probably do that to start off with and just reset it. Yeah, this will be resetting every time. Okay. And I would be the number of entries we've encountered. All that is less than all the ones in the file that we're looking at. And we would increase the directory entry here. And if we found a file, we would do plus plus. If we find a zero, that would be the first one that we find, which would be good. So let's do this. This would be less than direct extents per inode, and num entries is less than current directory entries. That makes it sound like the current directory, though, doesn't it? <laughs> let's make this a little bit better. Let's do total entries. Num entries less than the total. So we know when we passed all of them. For all the blocks we're reading, we read the next one in. We set this, number entries is less. Temp directory entry plus plus. So for each directory, if we found one, we'll increase the number that we found. Otherwise, if it is zero, we could add Add to that first fit that we found. Found empty spot. Add new file info here. So there we go, we'll do that. If the ID is zero, then that is empty in the directory entries file data. So we have an empty name and an empty ID, but it, it is still as big as a directory entry. So we just fill that info out. 
If we delete a file later on, then this should be found before the end of the data blocks, for example. So we get the name and the ID, and then we can write it there. Otherwise, we'll write to the end, I suppose. Yeah. If we equal the number of entries, then I guess we're at the end, and we should still add it at the end there. We'll just add it here. And update. I don't want to do duplicate data, but I think I'll have to duplicate, and that's okay. Um, and this is a full block we're doing, right? Yes, and that is J. We'll just copy this. This is what was loaded. Yeah, that's what was loaded, so we'll just do that. Because that's the current block that's there. That data was updated with this. That should be okay. And yeah, I'm gonna put braces around. Now this says less than total entries, but we only want the number of entries that we could get within a block probably. Otherwise this would read beyond the block and that has not been loaded yet. So let's add another thing, I guess. Hmm. Might need another variable, maybe. Like a counter, a temp counter here. Um, let's do entries per block. That would be what we're looking for. So entries in block. Entries per block. So in block would be zero. Entries per block would be the block size. which I think is a thing here. Yeah, 4,096. So per block would be the block size divided by directory entries. Do I have that? <laughs> it's sectors per block, I have bits per block. Do I have like a number of directory entries per block? Because I could have that be a constant as well. Yeah, directory entries per block. There we go. Didn't even have to worry about it. This would be... Well, we could do that as well. But I have an extra one here. This looks kind of jank, but oh well. <laughs> I never like it typing like this. So if we haven't found the total number in the file, but we haven't found the number in this current block, that needs to be a boundary as well. So I would have entries in block just has as an offset needs to be less than directory entries per block. And we do temp entry plus plus and we do entries per block plus plus. So no matter what, we're going to stop when we have the total number that are in the block. So if if we can hold it's 64, so I think it's it's still eight, right? 128 times four. So if there's none that are blank and we passed all the number that could be there, then we want to stop. Otherwise, if we found one and it's the total number that could be there, we want to stop. Uh, if we didn't find one, we want to add it there. But we only want to go until the number that could be in the block overall. That's what that's doing. That should be OK. And that'll stop early. We won't go into memory that isn't read yet from reading into a block. J will go to the next one. We'll read that in. We'll check that one. That should be okay, hopefully. This is, okay, that's that for loop. Let's end that for loop as well. It's only n cubed. That's not too bad. For some small values of n, that's not too bad. Okay, yeah, I think that'll work. The first empty spot we find. So if we go till the end, then we don't have an empty spot anyway, and it shouldn't add. But if we do find one before the end of the total blocks in the file, total sectors that may be, then we should find a spot and be okay. And it will add to that spot. So I think that's a better implementation than it was, hopefully. 
And yeah. And we'll update the super block info. So hopefully that's all we need to do. <laughs> but I'll find out when I call open and nothing works and I get like a page fault and stuff's broken, but that's okay. I do want to think about this. We'll see. If I delete files, I don't think this will come into play. It should just add it at the end down here or wherever the first available, but that's fine. Like if what I'm thinking now is if <laughs> if all the blocks are currently filled with directory entries for this directory on disk, then this would come into play and we'd have to add a new block. But when I search through all the blocks in the file, this should go until the end, right? And that should be okay because the new size and bytes would be one more block. So it should have another block's worth of directory entries that are free if a new one had to be added. And then this would find that location in that new block when it's loaded here. I think that'll be okay. So that should work if my logic is right, which is probably not, but that's okay. So if this doesn't come into play, then we'd still get the first one available. If this does come into play, it should add to that new block because it would be empty data. I don't know if it's empty data, actually. I should initialize that. That is a good point. Thank you, self. I don't know if it's empty. <laughs> We're getting a new block. We're checking if it's free, but I don't know if the data in that block is free. And if it's not, if it's, uh, well, it'll be free, but if it's not all zeros, then this wouldn't come into play. It could be uninitialized data. Let's do that. If I add one, I'm setting the bit is free. I need to wipe it out on the disk. So am I doing that here? Use that bit, expand the length. This is updating the data bitmap. I need to update the data block. These are just updating the bitmaps. Okay, let's do this. Initialize new data block on disk so that checking for free directory entry space works later. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So I'll just read it, read it to memory, wipe it out, and write it back to disk, right? Effectively. Let's read a block of data. I'm starting at some block number multiplied by sectors per block. That would be the starting point. I would want to read it in. I need to change this to be an address or something later so I don't have to freaking cast it all the time, but that's okay. Temp block, since that's a, an array, I have to do this. That's okay. Read it into there and read with retry. And we do the same thing, except that would be right after we update the data. And updating the data would be memset. We can just set it all to zero. So let's set temp block, which should be a UNAT pointer because it's an array. Set zero, size of temp block. Yeah, size of temp block. And it to all zeros. Unit block, and we'd write that back. Okay, so what block number would this correspond to? It would be the data block on the disk, which should start at um, this last use extent lengthen blocks. Mm -hmm. It would be the first block plus the lengthen blocks minus one, right? Yeah. But didn't I do that for the last used? earlier? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, this last used block here. Isn't that what I'm doing? That's the current end. I guess that might increment by one if we need a new one. Or is this already if we need a new one? That is. First block plus length minus one. But then I increment that length. Where am I? Am I only using that here? Okay. I'm only using that there. We're checking plus one anyway, but this is the next extent. I guess we'll do that so I don't have to think about it. So let's get the, uh, the block we have to do. Let's have a constant block to use. 
Let's put another variable in here, that's fine. Let's do this stuff here. So this would be the last use extent first block plus the last block or the length plus the length minus one. That's the block we have to use, right? Or would it just be plus length? The length could be one, that's fine. Yeah, it'd be minus one, yeah. Because if the length is one, then we're setting the block at the first block. If the length is two, it would be one after the first block, because zero-based indexing. A minus one would be fine. I should be fine. Block to use. I still feel like I'm overcomplicating all this stuff, but I've never written a file system and tried to talk it out before, so. <laughs> Oh, my brain hurts. That's okay. I need to get smarter. There's always more edge cases that pop up like this stuff. Like, yeah, it needs to be zeros there. Doi. And we're converting it to a sector to load it. Yeah, that should be okay. And then it'll check and it'll add it. All right. Hopefully that's all we need to do. I don't know. I need to do read directory so that I can read and do a test to see if things actually work. That would be nice. That would be nice, so I can try that. Uh, I bet you it does not compile. I have errors. I always have errors. That's okay. Simple. 374. That's not what it was. 374. This needs that. Right with retry 381, probably because I make mistakes. She'll be what seven down. Yeah. Size and bytes is size bytes 385. Maybe I should name it size in bytes because that's what I think of it as. So trying to save space typing. I know T has no member size and byte. No, it doesn't. That's true. 407. That's what I keep naming it. That is a, a better name maybe. That's okay. Entries per block. I did in block. That's true. 422. I did entries in block right here. Didn't I do per? No, I did total. Um, in block. Yeah, yeah. This would be the entries in the current block that we're iterating through up to the total that could be within a block. Yes. That's what that's, that is what that is doing. So this will be zero to seven. Zero to seven, zero to seven. If we find one, we'll get the number that we found. Yeah. There we go. Does this load? Okay. We aren't doing anything with it yet. I just want to make sure that things load and there's no memory leaks by default. Okay. Anywhere in printing. <laughs> so how do we read a directory? I guess I could make another thing for that because this will only be used within the kernel. And the shell's only used in the kernel. Create a new directory. This would be behind probably, this would probably be behind a command, be behind a make dir or similar command. Worry about that in a second. Let's make a read directory. So I wanted to do sort of read directory given a directory, which would be an inode, probably. How do we do this? So read a given directory's file data and print to screen. So let's load, load file data, load dir's file data. So is there a chance I could call load file? Maybe. Give it an inode and an address. I don't know what address I want to load it to. Oh, yeah, I do. Never mind. Yeah, I do. <laughs> we could go through all the blocks. We could load it to memory, or we could load a block at a time. It'd be similar to what I'm doing here, though. There's probably a better way to write this stuff so that I use what I currently have and not, uh, you know, duplicate code more. But oh, well, can't think of it well at the moment. OK, so let's try that. Let's go through all the extents in the directory. Well, all the direct extents. I do need to load single and double 
indirect. I know I'm not doing that. I do need to do that. That's fine right now. Right now, that's okay. So load single double indirect x tense. So we have our directory dot extent i dot first block. So I want to load, yeah, I'll need a double here. I have this first block, j less than directory extent i lengthen blocks, j plus plus. That is that. So I want to load that. We'll load a full block of data, which is sectors per block, starting at j times sectors per block. I should have a better name than j. Try to think of that eventually. Again, we're gonna again we're gonna load that into the temporary block. Read reading. Okay, so we have a block of data. It's a directory, it should have directory data. What we can do though is guard against that just in case I make a mistake later at runtime or something. If directory dot type, the type or file type. Type, yeah. If it's not equal to directory, we'll uh, return. Maybe I'll have it return a bool. Just in case we want to check that later, if reading worked or not. That's a simple thing to do. Return false, or later, if it's if we got all the way through, or return success, or true. All right, ended without errors. Okay, so we're, we'll guarantee it is a directory. Read in the next block of data for that directory. We want to print the data to screen, so... Let's do that. How would we do that? Well, we need a directory entry. Yeah, so let's do directory entry T. We'll do a pointer, directory entry, directory entry T. <laughs> Good setup boilerplate to that block of data. And I'll probably do similar things that I was doing when I'm adding these. Like I'll, you know, do similar loops like this. So we'll get the total entries that we could print, uh, the number that we're currently at. So we do need those as well. I guess I could put those. Yeah, we know the total that we could print because we only have one directory we're looking through, which would be this. The number of entries that we found so far, we're not doing. We get that. And we need to loop through those directories in the block. Yeah, so we could set this. We'll just do that as well. So some duplication here. Oh, well, these are locals. Maybe that's a little bit better. We'll do that. Point it to the next block that we're doing. While the entries that we have found is less than the total that we could find. And the number that we currently found. Entries and block. So same thing as before, our entries in the block. Can't type. <laughs> is less than directory entries total that we could find. Entries in block plus plus and directory entry plus plus. So this will be zero every time. So we'll read through the maximum number, which should be eight. So it'll go zero to eight, and that's fine. Zero to seven. In this current entry, if we found a valid one, so if it has an ID that is not zero, it should be valid. So if the ID is not equal zero, then we want to print out the data for that. So I'll print out 
uh, the name, which is the only thing in the directory entry that's not in the inode. So print out name from, yeah. Print out name from this directory. We found a file at this point, so we'll print out the file name first, and then we'll print out inode info for the file, which means we'll have to load that, but it'll probably only be a sector, so it won't overwrite this block, so that'll be a different thing, that'll be okay. So the file name will just be the directory entry name. And impl, this might have to be in some other file because I don't want to include, I probably don't want to include standard IO within here. I could though. I'm not sure. Let's see what all is using this. If we have include, fs, fs impl.h. Oh, I did it both. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let's do just that. Single quotes. There we go. That's in the third stage, so probably not great. Probably can't do that then. Or, well, no, the third stage is not make disk. That, that probably is okay. I can do printf and stuff. Interrupts has it. Kernel has it. Well, let's find out. I don't think it's great putting standard IO in here. But we'll see, does that go by default? Nope, because I didn't finish that stuff. And read directory. But let's say we want to print F the name. Or aren't you supposed to do like this now? <laughs> yeah, the name should be a string. It should be null terminated. That should be all right. Then we want to print out the info for the file. I just want to see if this has errors from including standard IO. And it does, because that needs a comma. Mm, can't do anything right. Expression. Directory entry, that's okay. Where's that at? 464, right here? Oh, directory entry T. There we go. Okay, so including standard IO is okay, right? Yeah. No, I'm printing it here. All right. Just making sure. So print out the inode info for the file. We have to load the inode. We have to load that in. Read write sectors again. We'll just do one sector this time and we'll read into temp sector. We'll do that. So what sector do we want to load? We need to start at we're loading the inode, so we need to start at the first inode block. Time sectors per block to get the right one. I could make this a constant, probably, instead of typing it everywhere. And we need to offset within the inode blocks according to the inode, which is going to be the ID. That's how we match the directory entry through the inode, through the ID number. So divided by probably inodes per block per sector. Yeah, because that would be the sector. The sector number offset from the starting sector of the inode blocks would be the sector containing the inode. So yes, that makes sense. Offset that a little bit. Okay, and then we'll get that inode. I'll get a pointer to it, I suppose. We'll have inode t inode equals and inode t pointer to the sector. And we could offset from that right here if we want, which would be the directory entry ID, modulo inodes per sector, which should be eight, but you know, if the ID is like 12, then you know, this would be one, because there's only eight per sector, and this would be the remainder of 12 mod eight, which would be four. So we'd get the right inode within that sector. And pointer arithmetic dictates that should be inode jump each time. Yeah, so that's the inode that we're looking at. So we want to print out the info for that inode. So what info do we want to print out for the inode? fs.h inode t inode t. We can print out the size, I suppose. 
Let's do the size. Maybe a certain amount of data. What I should do is implement in printf like the fixed width, which is, I don't remember. I think you can do a minus as well, which is like write adjust. So I might do write adjust and I might do like a width, like I don't remember how you do it. Is it like negative 10? Yeah, maybe that's left adjust. But whatever it is, that'll be like left to right adjust the, the number as well as pad it out to 10 at most or only print up to 10 digits at most or something. So I might do stuff like that so that I can print stuff out and have it be, you know, more like a table <laughs> so it would work better. Because if you do like LS, you know, AL, these are at a fixed width, right? There's a certain number of characters here. So I want to replicate that with within printf so that we can print out this amount of data. But if there's only like three characters here, we still want to pad it out so that everything lines up. And that would work better for like printing the memory map command. So stuff would line up better, you know, that, that has use cases. So I might look at doing that on the next video to make better output. We'll see. That could be a smaller thing, hopefully. But I'm going to print out probably the file size. I could print out if it's a directory or not. If, you know, this directory has a, a subdirectory. I could print something like in DOS, you have angle bracket or square bracket. I don't remember, but it says DIR. Um, and then I could print out the name. I am doing that. So I guess I'm printing out maybe the name and then the size. And then if it's a directory, I could print out this as well. I don't know. It'll, it'll look weird. It'll be different, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be the same thing. So we already printed out the name. Let's say we have a space or something. Let's do this. To do change printf to use fixed width with padding and left, right, just. Yeah, to um, be able to use fixed width padding and left, right, adjust. Yeah, okay. So we have a name, we have a space. We loaded it here. Let's say if the inode type is a directory, then let's also print, could do put s as well. This is fine. Let's also print dir, print it in square brackets, dir. Uh, I could just do put s. Yeah, let's do that. So we already have a space. So let's put a space after that as well, just in case. And then after, if it's a directory, let's print out the size. So I guess we'll do D. Oh, well, it's a U though. I don't know if I have U in there. I probably just have D for int. I could check. Let's say right now we'll print out the size and that would be inode size bytes. And I want the timestamp. And that's probably all I need to do. I could have the reference count as well. See if it's open. Let's say we have a month, day, year, and a reference count. I guess that's all I will do. And I don't remember. I thought I was gonna remember if it was called date time or not. It's last modified timestamp. So we need last, last modified timestamp dot, let's do month. I'll just put it all in the next line. Just do that. Yeah, probably do. We'll do the USA right now. We'll do month, day, year. Hopefully that works. My alarm went off. That's all right. I'll do. <laughs> scared me. We'll do month, day, year, and I'll do the reference count. Okay. So that'll be the info for each directory entry if it has an ID. And we'll go until the number in the block or we're done. If it's not equal to zero, let's also increment the number of entries. So that works. Okay. 
and hopefully that does work. It probably will not, but we will see. So what would we do for that? How would we use that? Um, I want a better way of doing commands. Right now I don't have one, but let's say we have another command and it is... Well, we already have directory, don't we? Never mind. I can go to where directory is being used. I also don't need to end this with nulls because those are implicitly ended with nulls. It is compiled at the end of the stream with a null. So this is just taking up extra data I don't need. I remembered that, but okay. Directory command here, print file table. I guess we would change that. And I would call read directory and it needs to be given something. We could end by printing a new line, I suppose. I could call it print directory instead of read directory. That might make more sense. Actually. Yeah, that, that would make more sense. So if we call directory or ls, it takes the current one that's being used, right? So that would just be the current, the current directory's inode, which is a value within this file. Yeah, so the current directory inode is the inode that'll be where we're currently at, and that's what we'll be calling directory for. Now we could pass it a different one, like a string or something. If we wanted to do directory like dot dot to check the parent directory, or we'd call dir for some given file path. So actually we might need to pass it a path instead of an inode. Annoying, that's okay. <laughs> I would pass it, don't need that. Argv1 would be the file path most likely, so I can do that. Argv1. And we'll do print directory. So if, if not print directory, we'd have an error. I guess we would do that. Put S, error, printing directory, it would be printf, error printing directory percent S, and this would be argv1, okay, otherwise we'd continue. So in here, I should have like a global error no or something that does help. And then we could read the error no value and print it out for, with functions like how C does it usually. POSIX and all that. Um, but this is now taking not a directory, so I'll have to get the directory to check the directory inode. Mm, yeah, it can be constant. Constant inode T. We have an inode T inode there. So I'll call it directory, and that will equal the inode from path, yes, given the file path that we'll pass in, so character pointer path, path, hopefully that works. If directory ID is zero, then we'll return false. Yeah, then it's still called directory and we can still do the code down here. That should be all right. So I doubt this is going to work. I highly doubt this is going to work, but we'll see what happens. So I can print a memory map. I don't know what's currently, uh, currently we're in the root directory. So if I do directory, it says error printing directory S, uh, which is not great. <laughs> I know that's wrong, so I can debug this on the next go around because I have to go because I've been going like too long already and this can take forever to edit down and stuff. Uh, so that's not going to be great. I don't know why it says directory S. I don't like that. Because we set the current directory when we load and initialize the file system variables here. Current directory has a slash. Oh, I'm passing it the inode. God, I'm stupid. Sorry. 
Oh, well, we're, we're passing this. I'm not passing it anything, so it doesn't know what data there, what data is there. So that's, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm a dork. Um, if argv1, if the first character, right, is blank, if we don't have anything there, it should be null, I suppose. So we didn't pass anything. We'll print the root directory, right? Uh, I'll do else. <laughs> this is not, not great, but that's okay. Say so if we didn't pass it for root, which would be this. Directory root. We'll do that. Else, we'll check the argv value that was passed in. Else, error printing directory root, which this could be put s. Now, I probably want to put a new line, like after I'm printing the directory anyway. I did say I had to go and I just get, I nerd snipe myself and do everything here, but that's okay. I could put char, put C, all right, and then we'll end. Okay. At least the error printed out, right? Like that's, that's good. It also has directory S, that is interesting. The slash does not work. I don't know why it wouldn't work. Uh, error printing. Directory slash. Why does it say S? I don't have anything in argv, I don't think. It does print the error though, because I do percent %s, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Should print the root directory. So I get the tokens here. argc starts at zero, memset argv, size of argv. Command string pointer equals command string. I guess I don't reset it each time, would that be why? I probably should. Probably should. Um, but I thought I did that every time anyway, up here. Yeah, I do memset that to zero, Never mind. I don't know why it's S. I'll look at why that is and see if it's any any bad or not. And if it's a really easy fix, I'll probably tack on to the end. But if not, it'll be part of the next one. Um, sorry, I don't have a working implementation, but I did get most of the baseline logic, even if it's wrong. Uh, it worked out for creating a file and for the open syscall, which is the one I wanted to do. So yeah, thanks for watching. Even though these are frustrating, probably the last five or so videos are going to be not great as I walk through the logic badly but uh yeah i'll try to figure out this directory issue and um move on to the other syscalls and things on the next videos so thanks for watching really appreciate it and uh cheers so <laughs> i'll see you then